Plotting money moves over cigar talk With some ladies that's chill over cigar talk Cognac sipping rum Yo, 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 what's going on world? It's your boy Najee from RapRadar.com And today, man, I got a very special guest Seated to my left Hey, man, hey This is one of them ones right here I listen to this tape, man Everything's for sale. I'm liking what I'm hearing. That's I got my man. man. Thank you for having Boogie, me. What's up, bro? We got big cigars. You know what I'm saying? You start playing with me, man. <laughs> so this grown man talk mm-hmm. right here. So what's yeah. going on? How you been? Everything good? I'm good, man. I got this V cut. Yeah. We over here chopping it up. How you, how you like the cigar vibe? You fuck with it? I fuck with it. I'm going to see if I'm going to fuck with it after this. Yeah. We're going to see how, when they get like to right here, how I'm feeling. <laughs> all right. But I'm right, actually getting right it right now. Up. Right now, I'm good. All right. All right. But so, so yo, bro, I, I'm listening to the, to, your, to the new project. And um, honestly, I feel like this is like, you know, a graduated work for you. Like when I listen to all the Thirst 48s, you know what I'm saying? And just listen to this, it feels like you elevated your level of creation. Do you feel like that? Or do you hear uh, that? Yeah, for sure, 100%. I feel like that's just us being in the studio though. I feel like anybody that just work at something, you just naturally gonna get better at it. And I just feel with this album, you could just hear the growth. Yeah. Cause niggas was in there working every day. Like it was a lot of tough days, but yeah. Does the process change at all? Like just between you creating, you know, this project versus like the Thirst 48s and... Uh, nah, well, Thirst 48 part one, I was by myself just trying to get popping. I did that um, in my mama, uh, in in their bedroom at my mama apartment. Yeah. But then when I added my producers, Kale and Dart, that's when the sound, the production got way better. Mm-hmm. And then it's just the same process, us, you know, finding loops, finding samples, making beats, and then me getting high as hell. Right. And yeah, you're right, catching the vibe. Going in the studio. For right. sure. Now, I like the, you know, the, the intro, like, it, it immediately stands out, man. Like, you're talking about, like, kind of being tired and at war with yourself. Yeah. What do those battles look like? Like, when you're talking about, like, you know, I'm, I'm tired of working on myself. I want to be perfect already. Like, what is that battle internally like for you? Uh, it's just a, a battle that's, that's every day. It's battles with me, me trying to do different type of music that I know could get me more popping. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's the battles with people telling me to do that type of music. Yeah. It's the battles with with uh, me knowing I'm wrong in a lot of situations and having to face myself, that's really the toughest thing. When you gotta really sit with yourself and face that you wrong in a lot of situations and having mm. to grow from that. Yeah. So that was really just what I was trying to get across. So when you, yeah. And yeah, and with the intros, I was just like rapping a lot. I'm like real old school with like intros where I feel like, like you, you gotta, gotta, be, you gotta set, the, set tone. the tone right. and you gotta get off. That's why on the second half we switched the beat up and I had to make sure I rapped. But yeah. So when you say like just, you know, you know, making those music and those records that you feel like people are telling you to make, is that a conscious decision that's something you straying away from or something like you don't like making? What is, what is that? Uh, it's something I used to try to make. I used to try to do music that sounded like everybody else mm. until one day my producer told me like, that, that shit weak, like <laughs> you need to talk about what you're going through. And then just the feeling you get from that, you're not gonna get it in like forcing music or, or doing shit that's not you, so. Yeah, I'll just stay away from that shit, honestly. I feel it. But I mean, the bag is there. You know what oh, I'm saying? Sure. You know that. You know the bag is there. Do you feel that. like selling out if you do that? Like trying to cash in for the bag? Like yeah, I yeah, hundred percent. Because I mean, at the end of the day, you can't take that money with you. But it's tempting because you know yeah. niggas love shit. Niggas ain't never had shit. Niggas like buying shit. And I know, like, I just know I could take that route and it'd be easy. But that's not the route I want to take. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you should know niggas can do that. I remember you had a song that said. Uh, like everybody trying to make a song like YG in LA. Oh yeah, and shout out to YG because you know what I'm saying he started the sound that yeah. niggas got lazy and just tried to copy it and yeah. Right. Okay, I feel that now. You got a song shit, that feels on, like man. it's organically starting to move. This silent ride home shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm seeing the challenge. My little, my little people ratchet people. record. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. What's up? What was your you know just your your thought process behind you know the creation of that record? Oh, I have to get my shit back lit. Um, the create the thought process was. I didn't really think about it. Uh, we found a loop. I started humming. I'm not sure what happened. I just started humming a melody. Oh yeah, and I didn't even want to keep the song. I just know I needed to have something on Instagram. Like I was trying to have content for Instagram <laughs> yeah. and stay like relevant before my album came out. Right. And then I did this little dance and everybody fucked with it. And I was like, damn, I might have to put this on my album. Everybody doing a dance. Yeah. Did you, so did you know it was going to have like this sort of viralist nah, capability nah. type shit? Hell no, I just wanted something to post on Instagram because <laughs> I had been dry for a couple of days. And yeah. I know people love in, in the studio shit. It's like a cheat code for rappers. That's a fact. My bad, I'm telling them niggas, but yeah, it happened. Yeah. All right. Now, I like that joint. Now, obviously, you know, you got the track with him. 
That's fucking major. That's a big place. Dog, like, I mean, obviously you, you signed the Shady, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. When you actually got the track back, like when them when those vocals hit, what what was what was your vibe? Was you was you hype? Were you just like, oh sh-? like it's- Man, yeah, I was waiting for it for a long time. I was mad because like I can only hear it for like one time because you know M like the president so it's like yeah. he had a special download link to where I could hear it just <laughs> shit one time and yeah, it. but I was like fuck I want to yeah. hear this shit again he got off and yeah yeah that's like my that's my biggest video now so what was the process of getting that verse you said you was waiting for it a long for a long time what does that look like is that you no 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 what I just knew it was coming because I we once once I played him the album we chose like this is a song I wanted to get you on but he was moving around at the time yeah. and I know he was like well, I think he was finishing some shit he had to do for him and just doing a lot of stuff. And I didn't know when it was going to be able to happen and it just happened. Yeah. And it was lit. So, you, I mean, you was on tour with him mm-hmm. overseas. That's my boy. Hey, man, that oh. nigga put me in front of 80,000 people. Anybody who got smoke with him, I'm taking all the taking smoke. Taking all that? That nigga changed my, he, he did something ain't nobody else did for me. Somebody from Compton yeah. took me to Australia and put me in front of all them people. As a fact. So, yeah. So, if MGK throw another record, you want his head? See this? So that's like some, you know what I'm saying? Some <laughs> clown shit. I don't, MGK don't even like. You know, nah, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing nah, that. Nah, I'm saying you was going to do Nah, I do. Smoke, if, so I if, if anybody who want like real life smoke, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. Like, just know I'm riding with him because he changed my life. That's, that's what right. I'm talking about. I'm not even saying like just music shit. Yeah. Nigga changed my life for real, for real. Like, how do you think it changed your life? Like, obviously, just like, just giving me, me that. Just, just, I'm not saying he the reason, like, that where I'm at, where I'm at, but he he added to it because he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to bring me on stage during his set because when I'm performing, it was only a couple thousand people out there. But yeah. when he brought me on his set in front of eighty thousand people, what does that, that feel like, dog? Uh, it felt like it felt like another show to me, honestly. Just regular, yeah. same type of. Not like not not like the cat, but I just when I'm when I'm performing, I'm just locked in, like trying to right. perform, and I don't really see what's going so on. So eighty thousand versus hundred yeah, is and, sort of the same. And I and he like I was wearing in ears. Oh, so, so you can't like, really so hear. So now I don't different. even hear what the fuck <laughs> niggas is saying out right. there no more. So now right. I really was just locked in. Nah, I feel that. So what is it like? Like I know you know you went from kind of building up on your own to getting this deal. And I know you said like, you know, on the record, like you blew through your advance quick in like three months. <laughs> How does that go? That's some super nigga yeah, shit. Like three it, months, you blew your bag? Three, it, probably was, it, was, it was probably a process over a year. And then the ta- I didn't realize you really got to pay taxes when you okay, get money. Yeah, like right. I'm, from a, I'm from the hoods so where we get taxes at the end of the year. Like we waiting for our for baby mama to get a check. Yeah, yeah, right. And we get a Claim couple thousand. And all that. Now they're like, oh, you owe 40,000. I'm like, damn, I spent all my money. I only got 40,000 left, bro. Right. It was like the toughest week of my life. I was crying to my business manager. Like I hate all y'all niggas. <laughs> cause like every, I, then I started hating my homies cause we kept eating Postmates, but it was my fault. You know what I'm saying? When you just offering shit. Yeah. And we're just but eating good. what was good. you spending bread on? Postmates though, like, and weed. Straight, that's it. Like, <laughs> Postmates and I weed. didn't buy no fancy <laughs> shit. It was literally just eating crazy yeah. and buying a bunch of weed. Mm. And not like, and we wasn't like performing. We was in album mode. So I wasn't really like making no money. You think like, I'm thinking when you sign, you just always got money coming in, but you don't. You mm. just get that advance and you got to figure out how to make it work. I feel like that's the hardest part, right? Like you signed and everybody think you got the money, no, 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 but you ain't really sure. got money, so and you, you can't gotta, really like, like. You got to cap because you don't want people to think you don't got it, so you like going along with it, and it's like, yeah, shit trash, <laughs> and it won't happen again. For sure. For so sure. What was that process like? Just kind of getting to that deal, right? Like the process and the grind of you, you know, being on your own, moving solo with just your team. Like how hard or discouraging was that? Uh, the Interscope situation, it, it was. It took a long time, but it, it felt like it happened at the right time for me. Uh, for a long time, I, I felt like I was being lazy. And then when I finally decided to go get some studio equipment, I had my kid, yeah. finally got some studio equipment with the financial aid. And then I put out the project and everything. Oh, you know about that hustle? Get the financial nah, aid. No, yeah, I still owe. I still owe. I, got a, I took out a loan, too. Yeah. I got a mic. And then I just recorded myself YouTube beats, um, niggas off Twitter. And then I got the, the Bitter Raps beat. Um, yeah, and then that helped me get like my first little placement on the blog. Hot New Hip Hop, I think, was the first one. Yeah. Then I just started gaining a little buzz. Because once the crazy thing about people in the city, once they see like the white people, not like that, but like blogs and shit get behind fucking you, everybody you, else start fucking with you. Yeah. Now everybody else think I'm popping just because of a Hot New Hip Hop post. Right. Then, yeah, I ended up talking to Interscope. Then I started talking to everybody. But the nigga at Interscope, Tim Glover, I just fucked with him the most. He was like, he really understood it. So I rocked right. with him. Then yeah, signing the Interscope is still tough because we in the house now. I'm thinking I made it, but yeah. ain't shit really popping. 
Um, so it's a lot of people. Yeah, you on see the niggas there. passing you by, passing you by at the label. Mm-hmm. Then like, yeah, I got the call from him. Then yeah, then that happened. Right. I don't know how it happened. Yeah, oh what yeah, well did? we yeah, put out we put it? out the project. I remember we put out the project Nigga Needs. I, we did put that project out. Yeah. Um, we had Nigga Needs on there. Got the Rihanna post to help with Instagram. For sure. And I think the Rihanna might have got the attention of Paul. Yeah. He probably seen it because of that. And then like and then it just, just happened. Yeah, That's yeah. what's up. Now I know you said you got your start like in church. You was doing church raps yeah, first. Yeah, for sure, for sure. How like how was that? Like just you know, kind of growing up in the church and like making raps like. What was that like? Cause that's a that's a whole different transition from like, you know, yeah, from I being mean, there. To it just... was it was, for some reason, it was easy. I don't know why. It was like, the church for some church is messy as it is. Like <laughs> right. that's the reason I stopped going to church because it was like too much politics. So dealing with the politics and that, and then going to the politics in the street is way different. But it's like politics is politics. politics. Same, people yeah. acting fake. People acting fake. But yeah, I just realized I couldn't keep talking about like that shit when I was going through real life shit in the world right. and I had to talk about that yeah no for sure I mean I think it's interesting like a lot of the records you know I know you was talking about you know a, a girl a specific girl you say you've been, I've been talking about the same girl yeah. for like a bunch of records yeah that's interesting because like just hearing the whole storyline of like you know where it was like you know that was your friend and like you escaped the friend zone basically that's mm-hmm. what I'm listening to it how, how how was that like what's that interaction like uh I don't know how it happened one day. She had been my, my best friend since high school. Well, literally, we were just super close. She was like one of the, not like that, she was like one of the boys. She was just yeah. always around us. Nobody ever really tried to get at her. Then, I don't know, something just told me make this song about her. <laughs> right. Then, yeah, we ended up becoming more than friends. They ended up not being friends at all. And yeah. Then, is, it, is it weird or awkward, like, when you making a lot of records about somebody and being that open, or, like, does it? Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm starting to realize it's not really, I sh- I'm putting a lot of people's business out there and I'm not sure if I got the right to do that. Mm. But then I tell myself it's my story too, so I do got the right. So yeah. it'd be like that battle I got with that. Right. Um, even with interviews, like putting people's business out there, I feel like, cause I got into it, my producer felt a certain type of way about me putting our, our business out there in interviews too. So I, I okay. start, I'm trying to be more conscious of when I do that, but still right. not be fake yeah. at the same time because yeah, I don't want to say that girl name no more either because now she's trying to sue me. Oh, word? Yeah, you got word. legal shit like that? Yeah, so it's God, like, damn. I'm dealing with shit like that. Man. So maybe I'm just going to like not say names. Right, no okay. That's, that's yeah. a smart move, yeah. I feel like. So but when you, I guess, kind of dealing with that, like just being in a relationship as a rapper, right? Mm-hmm. How hard is that? Being a, well, now I'm in a good relationship. Yeah. It's like the first time I, I ain't been in a dark relationship. I, I don't think, just mean that one. I just mean like in general, just like, as a rapper, like, you know, you, you gaining more notoriety, yeah. the clout coming, money coming, yeah. traveling. That's what I'm saying. I think it all depends on, on the person you're with. It's, it got to be the people in your life got to understand it. Even if it's friendships, relationship, any type of relationship in your life, people just got to understand it. And they got to be like, I'm, I'm at this point now, I can't just have people around me that's draining energy and not bringing shit to the table. Bizarre. Like, for the past couple of years, I feel like I've just been looking out for niggas and, and I ain't been getting the same return. Well, not with a lot of friendships. Yeah. And now at this point, I just want even relationships. Right. So that's where I'm at right now. All right. I and feel if it. it's even, it's not going to be hard because we both bring shit to the table. Yeah. Now, it's funny because, like, you know, when I'm listening back, you know, even this album, but the Thirst 48s and just like, you know, I know you said, that, you know, I feel like I'm too pressed for bitches sometimes. Like, yeah. I think that's funny. And then you had the... Um, the line in this where you was like, you know, you drunk tech scissor, she ain't hit you back, uh-huh. you was hot. Yeah. What is that? Like, how? <laughs> Man, that's that me about, being, though? I'm like, me being a nigga, at the end of the yeah. day, I'm still like, I want niggas to understand, I still be blowing it sometimes too. Niggas don't like get popping and then just become like upper like, level oh, humans it. and become perfect. Like, um, how you got a number though? Scissor? Yeah. yeah, see, the scissor thing is not as crazy as everybody think. My big homie G Weeder, it's his fault, free him, but he like, Super close to TDE, he knows Scissor. He like kept gassing me up the whole night. Like I think he could pull her. I think yeah. I want Put somebody. The in I want it. somebody to pull her. Yeah. And then she happened to come up to me say she liked my music because I guess she had heard my voice or something. She like I know your voice is familiar. She told me she liked my music. Boom. Like I got her number on some friendship. You was hype over that, right? Nick, like, nigga, yeah, lit, like, yeah. Scissor <laughs> on my like, music, like yeah. Scissor you know, on straight. my music, it's lit. But yeah. I'm drinking at Coachella, okay. and I'm like, yep. The weeder, the homie still gassed me. I'm like, yep, I'm gonna tell her, like, let's link, let's link. You feel me? Right. I didn't like slide, like, I'm trying to, like, fuck with you. I just told her, let's link. Yeah. But I was drunk when I texted her. 
and I probably definitely had different intentions. So, all right. And she never replied <laughs> <laughs> at all. Just threw it out there. Nah, like, she. Nah, I think I got one text back from her, probably in yeah. my life. But yeah. If you hit her now, she gonna reply. Cause this shit moving hey, right man, now. Hey man, shout out to Scissor. I don't want no smoke, <laughs> man. I'm not doing that, man. Right. Shout out to Scissor. Nah, I feel that respect. Yo, so but you, I mean, obviously you have a child. You have a son, is it? Yeah, I got a son. And I know you know you talk about him on the records. Yeah. And you had a line that stood out to me where it was just like, um, I'm missing out on co-signs to be a co-parent. Mm-hmm. I thought that was interesting. What is that like? Just kind of you know having all these obligations for your career and still trying to maintain that presence in your son's life. Yeah, that's that's honestly the toughest thing about being a rapper is missing out on the moments with him. Um, but I keep saying, me teaching him that he can follow his dreams and actually get something that he wants in this world yeah. is, is, is more important than anything mm -hmm. that I could teach him as a father. So I'm trying to make sure he see that I'm out here chasing something and doing what I want to do and you don't got to settle. Like, you don't got to sure. settle for your situation. You don't got to, like, become a parent and go work at some warehouse yeah. and, and do and that just, yeah, right. and give up on your dreams. So. Do you battle that? Like, damn, like my son got a basketball game, but M just called me to go to the studio. Like, nah, how? because early, them early years, I put in that work early. Like, so yeah. I know all of all of me is instilled in him. Like, the reason he played basketball so good is because of me. You it's was nice? You uh, balling back? Yeah, I was hard, but he better than I am. But I just, right. I'm better at coaching probably than I am at hooping. So, <laughs> right. but yeah, I just, I put in them hours with him. So. Right. He, he got it now, so it's good. How has being a father just impacted you, your, you know, your life personally and just in the music? Uh, patience. Uh, he always tested my patience. And even though I feel like I'm impatient a lot, I feel like I'd be even worse if it wasn't for him. Um, I think I'm more compassionate because of him now. I used mm. to be, like, cold to everybody. Yeah. But I feel like, yeah, he just softened me up for sure. Right. No, and now like, my thing is trying to soften him up because it seemed like he oh he caught he that ball now yeah, too. He, he, tough. he tough. He tough. <laughs> yeah. How old? He nine. Oh okay. Yeah, he crazy. Yeah, uh, that's what's up, man. Now I know another thing I want to ask you. You say you be taking a lot of Ubers. You don't drive from nah, LA. Nah, I don't know how to no, drive. I, LA, you don't drive, I don't even dog. know how to drive because yeah. my mama, me and my mama, never had no bread. My yeah. daddy wasn't around. We was always on the city bus. Nobody ever. I never had like. Damn. Never so then by the time never. I was nigga was grown. I was like, yep, Uber is lit. I got a little bag. <laughs> you ain't even fuck with it? Yeah, but I'm about like, to, when I get New back, City, when yeah, I get on, back, I'm finna learn how to drive. You got a deal, you want to, you got to, come on, Niggas man. Niggas gonna stop playing with me. Yo, dog, y'all gonna get him some driving lessons or something, man. What's up, <laughs> dog? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it, man. I'm about to like this shit. Yeah, like this shit up, man. Nah, that's what's up. So how do you, I guess, what, what do you think, like, you know, just if we talking, like, evolution and how to maneuver? Because like I said, I feel like I've been tangibly seeing you grow, I, I, I see things on the upper trajectory. Yeah. How do you move up from here? Like, what does that uh, look like in your head if we talking about like, I mean, just going I, up? I think it's just finding ways to stand out. I mean, now it's the time, like, it, you can't just be about the music. That's why I've been trying to like, mm. I'm glad I got a team around me. I feel like we had a great ass rollout with this project. They they got me out of my shell. I was like doing more Instagram shit because I used to be the nigga super Instagram killer. Yeah. Like if you on Instagram, you weird. But now I'm just suggesting <laughs> and taking the power out of that shit and putting yeah. the power in my hands because I know it could be beneficial. And I just was against it for, for so long because the way you was one of them niggas like yeah, that, this is because the way niggas use the platform. I right. feel like we still got responsibilities with these platforms because all the all the youth is watching. You feel me? Everybody watching. You feel yeah, me? That's a fact. And so we gotta we gotta be responsible with it, but still not be corny and, and be, you gotta still be cool so right. trying to figure that out all right that's what's up so now, now that you you got this you be going on tour soon or yeah my like? first headlining tour is big Ooh. late niggas better stop playing with Come me on, talk your shit. i finally sold out of la date you yeah. feel me so and i added a show so niggas gonna stop playing with me like i said all right, that's a fact, man. Well, we looking forward to a boogie. I appreciate man, you pulling you up, my dog. Thank you for having me, man. Big cigars. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? It's a new way. Bring that back to L.A., man. Yeah, I don't know what's yeah, up. Yeah, I got you, man. Wait. Hey, yo, this is Rap Radar, Cigar Talk. My man what Boogie, we out of here. What if we put weed in here? Yeah, we out of here. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, off camera. <laughs>